Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. When the machines kicked our ass in the Matrix and turned our people into glue, the machines were mostly powered by solar energy at the time, so we had no choice but to blot out the sun. Of course, this probably harmed humanity far more than it did the robots. Our entire food chain depends on photosynthesis. Without the sun, we'd have to rely on creating artificial sunlight to grow crops. Now, you'd think that with the sun blotted out and all, they would just rely on nuclear power. But no, they also decided to take humans and place them inside of pods. These pods kept humans in stasis and connected them to the matrix while simultaneously harvesting bioelectrical and thermal energy. In a strange way, our usefulness as biological batteries saved our entire race in the Matrix. But in real life, how true is this? Can humans actually be used as batteries? And how efficient would these batteries be? At the molecular level, the human body is made up of a bunch of atoms. Atoms are made up of charged subatomic particles known as protons, which are positively charged, neutrons, which are neutral, and electrons, which are negatively charged. Sometimes atoms as a whole are negatively charged or positively charged, like North Korea and South Korea. These charged atoms are also known as ions. When two obviously charged ions come near each other, they will be attracted to one another like a magnet and unify, so that they can be neutrally charged once again. During such bonds, there naturally will be an exchange of negatively charged electrons from both sides in order to create a better balance. Protons don't really move because they're very hardcore and attached to the neutron. The exchange of these electrons to create balance actually creates energy, just like how the exchange of trade goods between North and South Korea would create commerce and wealth. This is just one of the many different types of chemical bonds that can happen and create energy at the subatomic level. Now our bodies are full of these little tiny amazing things called cells. As you might recall, cells have membranes which can control the flow of elements in and outside the cell through tiny gates. Our bodies are made up of all sorts of elements like sodium, potassium, calcium, and so on. These elements are also charged ions. Resting cells have an internal negative charge, usually made up of potassium, while the outside environment around a cell is full of positive elements like sodium. When the cell membrane gates open, the negative elements are attracted out of the cell and the positive ones are attracted in. This process creates an electrical impulse. The electrical impulse can release signals to nearby cells to have them also open up their cell membranes, which can create a chain, relaying messages from our brain to our body and back. This is basically how our entire body moves and communicates. It's how our muscles move and create kinetic energy. It's what makes all of our organs and various systems function the way they do. Humans are just beginning to understand and tap into these electrical signals. Whether that's Elon Musk's Neuralink program, which places electrode implants into the brain to read the electrical signals from the brain and hopefully translate that information and use it for a wide variety of things. Eventually, Musk will hope to create a two-way channel that can relay information out of the brain and back into it. Then we have more simple devices which are already in use that detect electrical signals from our nervous system topically through our skin. This information can be used by amputees to power prosthetic limbs. So the human body can create energy, whether it's bioelectrical energy or thermal energy or even kinetic energy through our movements. But just how efficient is the human body? First, humans must consume massive amounts of calories on a daily basis, even if they aren't exerting themselves and just lying in a tank motionless. The average 150-pound person burns around 63 calories per hour when sleeping, which equals 1,500 calories in a 24-hour cycle. And because of our complex digestion system, humans need a variety of different nutrients and minerals to stay healthy. Obviously, in a matrix-like situation where the sun is completely blocked out, it'll be pretty hard for the machines to grow food without having to expend massive amounts of energy for UV lamps. That, or maybe they can use mushrooms. The method that they explain to us in the matrix, however, is a bit more nauseating. The machines liquefy our dead into food, so it's cannibalism. This actually makes very little sense because humans generally consume anywhere from three to five pounds of food a day, which equals, you know, several hundred a year. This means for each living human, you would need at least three or four human bodies to keep them sustained and alive. After just a few years, you would have to significantly decrease your crop of humans. Humans eating humans is not only immoral, but it's also not what I would call a renewable or sustainable system at all. Whatever they are feeding the humans, we still aren't a great investment of energy when it comes to how much we can output. 
A human has an average of 25% mechanical efficiency, which is no better than most cars. Now, these humans in the tanks obviously aren't moving much, so instead of kinetic energy, the machines are capturing just thermal heat and bioelectricity. Morpheus claims that the machines can collect the falling amount of energy from just one human body. The human body generates more bioelectricity than a 120 volt battery and over 25,000 BTUs of body heat. While his estimates are perhaps a little bit too high, they still fall within the realm of possibility. After all, machines are far more advanced than we are, and they've been growing humans like crops essentially, and I'm sure by this point they've genetically modified us to be optimal for our job as living batteries. The same way we've optimized dogs to be cute or corn to be very easily grown. But even then, humans are incredibly inefficient as power generators. With a 25% efficiency of translating fuel or food into electrical power, the machines would be better off pouring those liquefied humans into a generator and getting power from that instead directly. Now Morpheus also mentions that the machines use some sort of fusion power to supplement this human battery system. Although I imagine it's the other way around, the humans are supplementing the fusion reactor, and that's because fusion reactors can generate massive amounts of energy easily enough to power an entire race of sentient machines. Unlike nuclear fission, fusion works by taking energy from combining different elements together, instead of using a violent collision to separate elements. It's how our own star works and requires an incredible amount of pressure and very high temperatures. But fusion energy is pretty awesome because it has no carbon emissions and also it requires very common fuel that can be found basically anywhere. It also does not produce radioactive waste and because of the small amount of fuel it actually requires, it's almost impossible for a large scale disaster to happen. Just one kilogram of fusion reactor fuel is as powerful as 10 million kilograms of fossil fuels. So clearly using humans as a battery is pretty idiotic, but the Wachowski brothers actually had different plans before they started the movie. Instead of providing energy for the machines, humans were contributing their brains to the machine's overall processing power. While humans make bad batteries and are very inefficient in that way, when we do consume energy, we can do things that no other being in the world can. While a brain is only 2% of a person's body weight, it actually accounts for 20% of the body's energy use. The brain is an incredibly complicated organ that has an immense amount of computing power. It's able to operate at around one exaflop or a billion billion calculations per second. The latest supercomputers need a million processors to come even close to modeling a human brain. And these computers are massive. They also consume huge amounts of power, give off massive amounts of heat. Human brains are the most power efficient computers that we have ever seen. And most likely because of physical limitations, it's gonna stay like that for a very, very long time. And even though semiconductor technology continues to grow and decrease in size, leading to a reduction in computer size, we're actually starting to get close to the limits of how small we can build these chips and semiconductors. And that's because the pathway that our electrical signals are traveling through on these chips are already measured at the subatomic level. Any pathway that's smaller would actually cause a phenomenon called quantum tunneling. And as we all learned from Avengers Endgame, anything quantum usually means unpredictable results and randomness. In this way, if pathways on semiconductors experience quantum tunneling, this means that the electrical signal could jump to another pathway randomly, which of course would create problems with information. There is research into other types of semiconductors like optical ones that use light and lasers to send info, but it seems like it will be a very long time before we can catch up to the processing power of a brain. And maybe there are physical limitations to synthetic materials. In the realm of science fiction, we oftentimes make the mistake of thinking that our infinite wisdom can surpass nature. But sometimes what mama gives us is best. And as we can tell in the machine world, most of the robot beings we see are not sentient, aside from the source and Agent Smith. There are very few artificial general intelligences in the matrix, and the ones that we do see generally create massive networks by sucking up other machines or other programs. Which means even in the matrix, there are limits in computing power, which limits how many true AI there can be. And although I'm sure they have several supercomputers lying around, the human brain is probably still the most efficient computer in town. So there you have it, guys. Uh, we make terrible, terrible batteries, but our brains are incredibly precious. As a person who played football growing up, I do recommend you guys wear proper uh, helmets and protection whenever you are endangering your head to collisions. Anyway, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and wear a helmet because you are the protagonist.